So, uh, this is um, a short adventure called Down We Go. You are all hunters who have arrived in the cursed city of Haramir for one reason or another. Uh, whether you've come here to find a fortune, to flee your past, or to respond to the, the strange lure of whatever it is that left you with your mark. You have found your way to Haramir, and as many people who find their way to Haramir, you have quickly run out of money. Um, <laughs> the best way for hunters to get more money is to fulfill contracts, and because of that, many of you are drawn to a place called the Bastion, which is a a small island of civilization at the edge of the cursed city where hunters and other people collect protected by the, the the militia and the sort of the presence by many armed people the bastion was once a, a monastery to the um, one of the saints the imperial saints now it is this sort of walled um defensible area people live inside the walls and just outside um but as as the further you get from the bastion the, the less civilized and the more dangerous the place becomes. Uh, all of you have, have come together, whether you've known each other for a while or you've just become newly acquainted, uh, but you have all ended up being selected for the same contract. Um, and you find yourselves, or you've been told when you answered the contract, to come to a, a small private room at the back of the Slaughtered Lamb Tavern, where you'll be given more information. And uh, as we begin, you've been led by one of the serving staff of the Slaughtered Lamb to this back room, down past through the, the expansive common room where there's sort of lots of people laughing and drinking and spending money, through a, a, a small corridor into quite a, a comfortable little snug. There's a small fire in the grate. There's a couple of sort of very moth-eaten wing-back chairs and a small table. And you're told that your, your contact will arrive shortly. And we shall begin as all of you shuffle into this this small um, snug and that kind of eye each other up whether you've arrived together or not and we can begin as you you name your characters and describe yourselves briefly to each other and we can work out how you know each other so um piper do you want to introduce yourself and give a brief description okay so um piper is a um um live individual very sort of thin and wiry um perhaps not eaten uh very frequently for a few days as well uh um dressed in um a almost like a um sort of a motley but it's very sort of like dirty and the colors all very faded um and then he kind of has like a bit of a, like a hooded sort of like cloak over the top of that um the, so the one thing that's kind of very noteworthy about him um, is that he has a very kind of fine-looking um, metal flute, uh, but this flute is kind of has extra sort of like reinforcements and um, and, and a blade at each end as well. So um, so it's like his, his musical instrument is also his weapon. Um, and if you kind of watch him closely, you might see the odd little snuffly nose peeking out from in amongst his clothes. Little whiskered nose. Maybe this little, little, little rodent teeth showing every now and again. And slipping in out of his, uh, out of his sleeves or um, like the, out of a pocket or in the corner of his um, hood or something like that. That's great. Um, and, uh, oh, God. And, and I was just going to say, and if any of you are particularly fond of music, he is, he is a, um, a fairly talented, um, not, not sort of like um, absolutely amazing, but a fairly talented flautist. And he does a lot of kind of, you know, folky, um, folky sort of uh, jigs and think sing along sort of songs. So, you know, before we went through to the back room, he was probably entertaining the um entertaining the masses in the in the main in the main room. Excellent. And uh, so Dirge, um do you want to introduce yourself and describe your character? Yeah. Um well I'm pretty broad, quite stout and short. Um, but I look very odd. It like my half of my skin kind of looks like bark, 
and my fingernails on one, my left hand side are like kind of rough and wiry. They, they look a bit more like roots than just normal nails. I'm wearing like raggedy rough canvas pants and like a leather jerkin that's been battered. It doesn't really talk much. He's got a mattock on his like on his hip and a club on his back. And then um, yeah, he's he's just sort of looking at everyone, not like slinking away, considering he's quite big. He's not very sociable. Likes to keep his stay more reserved and just more observe, really. Excellent. And um, we've now got McCrug. Do you want to describe your character and introduce yourself? Okay, so McCrug is a sort of imposing figure. Um, got a bit of a lean ish physique, um, but the only really notice noticeable thing about him is that he's fairly gaunt and always looks like he's starving. He hangs towards the back of the room and is kind of, you know, aloof. Excellent. And uh, Nuala, our last one. All right. Uh, so Nuala is quite thin uh and not particularly tall, not like short, short, but not particularly tall. Um, she has pure white hair. Um, she is wearing a big leather duster that almost like makes her look even smaller because of how big it is. Um, <laughs> she has a rifle on her back, uh, like slung around around her uh, chest, and has several like various um like medic bags on her hips excellent and um how do you all know each other have you have you just come together now to answer this contract or have you have you known each other for a little while since you've been to been in haramir right um i've been wandering around a fair bit. Anyway, I've only just come to Harrowmere because I lost all my money and I need it to carry on my endeavours. So I heard this place was a good way to earn some quick money for people that have an aptitude in the line of work. So I've I've come and I'm just scouting out the, the rest of the people. Anyone else? Are you all similar? Um, I, I think Piper's been in and around the town for quite a bit. He's only recently um, a hunter, but he's he will have been a, a kind of a, a, a street performer and a musician, uh, knocking around the, the the taverns and things like that. So um, it's quite possible, and he's quite sort of superficially gregarious. I would say he's one of these people who has lots of acquaintances, but maybe only one or two very kind of true close friends. But, you know, a lot of the sort of person that um, that a lot of people will kind of maybe recognise, know, he'll have maybe had a chat to people. Um, you know, if there's, if you want somebody who sort of like pulled together a few, a few people, because he's, he knows you, knows you in passing that, that, that might be a possibility. Depending on how people want to do it with their characters. Um. If I might step in. Um, McCrug has been around Harrowmeyer for a little bit. Um, he doesn't like to talk much about where he came from, but you will occasionally see him dark alleyways stalking. He actually disappears afterwards, but if you do see him around town, he'll seem a little bit less hungry. Uh, Nuala is fairly new to Harrowmeyer. Um, this was basically her safe haven, ironically enough. Um, she was, uh, court-martialed, uh, and was set to be executed and escaped. 
and uh, the Empire doesn't really bother with Harrowmeyer anymore, so she ran here. So she's fairly new. Yeah, so it sounds like most of you have sort of come together. So the, you're you have not worked as a hunter hunter band before. So possibly you, you, you this is your first time meeting each other as you sort of sidle into this room. Um, so yeah, as you are you all just sort of stood around eyeing each other up until you're waiting waiting for the uh, the contract um, provider to arrive, or are you you having sharing some words? Um, one thing. Um, McCrug did used to be in the army, so it is possible that he has come across Nawala beforehand. Um, um possible, not necessarily possibly likely, because yeah. her entire uh, did I say platoon? I think it was her entire platoon was massacred. Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> maybe in another life. Yeah. <laughs> You might at least recognize the the sort of the military bearing in each other and sort of Definitely. as you're sort of stood eyeing each other up, realize that, yeah, you've probably you've both been ser you've both served together. The Imperial Army is very large. The Empire expands from sunrise to sunset. So it's you know qu quite possible you've never met each other. But, yeah, you could at least sort of eye up and realize that, yeah, well, this person's probably trained in a similar manner to me. McCrug, how, how long ago? Did you uh, leave service? Um, it actually wasn't too long ago. Um, he is still relatively new. Uh, it's been about a year for Nuala. So if it was uh, sooner than a year, you might have heard about the massacre, but the details are kind of sparse. Mm. That's juicy. I think if there's any sort of like... Uh, tension in the air, then uh, Piper would look to alleviate it. Maybe with a little kind of quick sort of like sleight of hand magic trick or something like that. And uh, <laughs> just to sort of like distract people a bit. And, uh, and you know, he's a natural entertainer. So that's the, the, the way he sort of um, breaks the ice, I suppose. Great. And uh, yeah, so while you're you know, palming cards and juggling and things like that, the, the door swings open and um, a, a sort of a young man, quite bookish, looking quite lean, um, dressed in the sort of the long blue um, sort of coat of the militia steps in. But he doesn't have the, the huge stovepipe hat, which mean, would, would identify him as like a um a constable or anything he's he's just sort of got like um sort of scraggly mutton chops and a bit of a sort of a side parting um and he sort of steps in he's got a big um sort of tome under one arm and a satchel under over the other arm and he sort of steps in looks at all, the four of you and he's like oh uh, excellent um yes uh i think it was the four of you uh, uh, that were contracted uh, uh welcome uh my name is um well, uh, yeah, he sort of like puts his bag down and extends a hand, and then like realizes he's got the book in that hand, and then puts that down, and then like sort of flusters a little bit. So, uh, uh, Karloff, Karloff Brand, um, get to the point. Oh, uh, sorry. Um, sort of backs away from a crug a little bit. Um, uh, yes, uh, the 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 contract. Um, well, uh, I need you to accompany me to recover some important items from a uh, location in the shambles. Um, I've, uh, I, I'm a clerk for the militia, and um, while uh, digging through some, some records, I, uh, I've uncovered some rather inf interesting information. Um, there's a, a house, well, uh, it was a hotel, um, not the, the, the best place, you know, that people would go to in the city, but not the worst. The, the kind of place where people with a bit of coin would probably end up when they came to visit Haramir back in the golden days. Um, and, uh, well, from the records I found, the, 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 the safe in the manager's office, it's where the, uh, these people would leave their, their money as deposits and collateral. And, uh, it seems that when the night of madness occurred, the manager left the safe locked and, uh, I have the key and he produces a key, um, from inside his coat. I'll, uh, quickly snags it. <laughs> uh, he's holding on to it. You can make me a, oh, let's have a... Let's have a reflexes check. That seems like the kind of thing as you're trying to snatch it out of his hand. All right. Uh, so so if you roll it. Oh, yeah. Wait, number of wait, dice wait. equal to your physique. Three. And then what's your reflexes skill? I am trained in it. 
then you're looking at fours or more. Alrighty. Uh, two sixes and a three. Uh, nice. So two successes. Yeah, you easily. He's he's holding on to this sort of fairly sort of um, firmly, but you just whip out a hand and snatch it out of his hand before he even realizes what you've done. And he's sort of like, oh no, um, please. Uh, that's uh, you know, it's the only one. It's uh, I am paying you. I I don't think Nuala says anything to him. I think she just like glances at him and then goes back to like inspecting the key. Uh, yeah, it's a sort of a fairly um solid looking key the key the kind of thing that would go in like a cast iron safe um it's possibly even got like a maker's mark stamped on it um it looks like it's you know it's got uh, if you've got enough anything in um uh, larceny then the number of teeth and the way this is made this looks like this is for a serious safe this isn't just some sort of cheap flimsy key um but he's yeah uh, uh, Karloff is sort of like dancing from one foot to another and looks like he wants to like snatch the key back off you but is quite clearly quite intimidated by you. I'll try and, uh, calm, I'll try and calm him down and um, so I say I'd, um, don't worry Mr Brand uh, we're just inspecting the uh, uh, inspecting the goods I'm, I'm sure it will be returned to you in good time well, uh, she parks yes, uh, the key <laughs> <laughs> well um, he sort of draws himself up and he looks like he's kind of drawing he's like considering things he's like well i i of course i, I i'm not going to tell you where the uh the the place is uh, so um uh, it's all good and well you can hold on to that until we uh we get there um yes uh if we find it and we we get the safe and we open it um how about well i'll pay you 100 shillings to escort me there and back each and and then we split whatever's in the safe how does that sound what are the percentages well uh, um I would say um, maybe if you each get 10% and then I get the remainder. He sort of gives you a look that, again, he probably thinks he's sounding a lot more in, like uh, business-like than maybe he is. So you could, you could try and make an intimidate check or something if you want to try and w- haggle with him that way. I was about to say... Yeah, like... oh, oh, wait, no, I'll let him go ahead. I've been talking a lot. <laughs> Dirge like just sort of leans forward so he's like makes himself more known from like slinking back and like you just hear him like creak up and he's like scowling at him and he's just like ah oh, yeah excellent well yeah if you want to make a uh, make an intimidate check if you want to try and sort of bully him to be giving him giving you a higher percentage or you can make a uh, a charm check if you want to try and charm him I do intimidate <laughs> but I've only got one dice but i am trained in it yep so um roll one dice and you're looking for a four or more no one sec i got a five nice so yeah so you have intimidated him he uh, and this guy he does look very sort of he, he's putting on a tough front but it's really not working um he sort of <laughs> hours back from you and mccrug kind of like glowering at him and he's like well um i suppose we could go for maybe a, a bit higher um uh, you'll be doing a lot of the protecting, so maybe um, fifty percent for me, and and we'll split the the other fifty between you. Was it was that twelve each? It's roughly it. Well, Krug kind of glares at him, and he's like, "Who are you working for? Where'd you get?" No, no, gentlemen, such suspicions. Mister Brand here is as as. Brought a contract for us. He's paying well, and he's offering a share of the goods. Now we can negotiate as to how much that share is, and I'm sure there may be even a little, little bit more m- wiggle room in that. Wasn't the Mister Brand? Um, but, um, <laughs> but, um, perhaps no need for such suspicions. I do have to say, it is kind of hilarious how no one really cares. They just want money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> perfectly on brand for hunters yeah <laughs> money um yeah he's he sort of he he, he sort of gives um piper a sort of a, a slightly grateful look and sort of nods and like yes yes of course i mean let's just let's get there and, and see how much is in the safe I'm, I'm sure there's more than enough to 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 split evenly all around so 20 yes. percent each yeah, that would be 20% each. <laughs> he's, sort of, he, 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 he's sort of looking like, oh, I've given away. And he, he sort of maybe like nods a bit hesitantly, like, oh, I suppose 20, yes. 
<laughs> Dirge sits back down now. Good. With a crack. And I suppose you'd all want to argue him down to 5%. <laughs> But Krug doesn't really care. He's happy with the 20% having to do nothing. Excellent. <laughs> um, so, um, yes, Karloff um, will sort of, uh, sort of, well, well, yes, okay. Um, well, I, I'm, I'm ready to go and sort of gestures to his satchel. Um, I'm, uh, yes, I know, I know the way. I can lead you there. Um, from what I, I understand, the uh, the area was hit by some of the the fire that that swept through the shambles after the night of madness but not too much it's it's, it's mostly intact in the area um but it is it's far out from the bastion so there there might be well gangs or or other things he sort of looks out there's the sort of the the sun is sort of it's late afternoon you've still got a couple of hours of daylight so you know it's we can probably get there and back before nightfall Well, let's get going then. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, let's get going. So, uh, as you step out of the slaughtered lamb, the slaughtered lamb sits on one side of what's called the beast market. So, the uh, the bastion is this great square sort of um, walled enclosure, and in the center, where there was once maybe like an orchard or something like that to serve the monastery, now there are just um, tents and stalls and shops where there's dozens or if not even hundreds of people in here. Um, hawking wares, selling swords, selling services. Um, there's um, people selling food, selling weapons. Uh, are there? Is there any equipment or anything you want to do in the the bastion before you head out into the city? I'd like to get going as soon as possible. Yeah. yeah. I have I've a total got, of zero around. shillings right now, so yeah, let's get, yeah. Let's get going. <laughs> Excellent. Starting character syndrome, no cash. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you you all sort of weave your way through this this crowd, like people like waving things under your nose, like pies, pies, hundred percent guaranteed actual meat, uh, <laughs> <laughs> dog or better. Krug sniffs uh, <laughs> it. He's like, yeah, no, <laughs> no rat in this, sir. <laughs> if if she can, Dual is going to try and nick some. Uh, like small snacks. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, yeah let's have a, a larceny check then, because that's uh, sort of sleight of hand. She's not particularly good. Mm. <laughs> she's not. She's untrained. So just <laughs> she's just very hungry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Three, three d six, uh, fives or sixes. Uh, one success. Okay. Yeah. So you managed to grab a couple of things without anyone noticing. So like little. Immediately in my mouth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So yeah, you could like snatch up like a little ske- a couple of skewers of meat, or maybe like some, you know, candied bits of dried fruit, um, and yeah, immediately scoff it down. Uh, you make it through the the, the beast market um, and pass through the great big gates and out into um, the sort of the slum city that is known as the shambles. Um, near the, the 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 bastion, the streets here are actually um, you know lit with lanterns and there are people out moving between houses here. Um, you can see there's a couple of militia patrols wandering around. Uh, as Karloff leads you away from the bastion, um, the streets get quieter and darker. Here the lanterns are only lit every one in three and then one in five and then there's one at the end of the street and there's one at the other end of the street and the, the darkness between or the, the, the street between is sort of not not dark yet the sun is is still up but it's definitely gloomy um and as you track down the cobbled uh, cobbled streets um here and there the houses are abandoned or boarded up or you see the sort of people peek out and then quickly pull the shutters closed as you sort of head out into the the wider city you know people moving on the streets are sort of hurrying about their business trying not to make eye contact um you know trying to get wherever they're going and, and back before sundown. Um, and uh, how are you proceeding? You, uh, Karloff is sort of leading you, occasionally pulls out his book and sort of checks a map and then sort of like, oh, right, uh, we're left up here. Um, but he seems to be sort of quite keen to sort of stick in the middle of your little pack. Is anyone doing anything as you're proceeding or are you just wandering along? I'm quite slow, so I'd probably be at the back. 
Yeah, McCrug would prefer to be at the front, uh, knowing that he's a little bit tankier than normal. I think Piper would be a front um, person as well. Um, you know, he's got a keen sense, keen pair of eyes. He'll probably be. Uh, um, uh, walking up beside McCrug and, you know, be very, very alert and scanning whilst uh, telling telling um, humorous anecdotes, maybe. McCrug doesn't laugh very much, but when he does, <laughs> it's a... <laughs> <laughs> Nuala is, like, in the middle, kind of. Um, they have their rifle out. Uh, she seems to still be chewing on something, even though nobody's actually seen her eat anything. But uh, <laughs> she's quiet, just looking around. Excellent. Um, yeah, and, I mean, you've probably all of you have at least been out and about in the shambles, so you know that most of the the area while uh, sort of there's little pockets of um, civilization there's sort of long stretches of either abandoned or partially collapsed sort of tenement housing here and there and then if you're unlucky sort of areas become quite dangerous um but at the moment um Karloff seems to be leading you um through mostly sort of um either lightly inhabited or, or sort of just quiet stretches of the um the, the shambles um, he leads you for a little while. The sun sort of is sort of ticking over to sort of late afternoon, um, and then um, he sort of stops and checks his book and says, "Ah, it's just it's just up ahead, um, just a left up at this crossroads leads into Catgut Street, and um, the uh, it's uh, it's called the Best Luxury Hotel. That's what we're looking for. Um, just uh, just up up ahead here." And he sort of gestures to the turning up on the left, and I will take an awareness check from everyone, please. That is two goes. Oh, is it, you're untrained. It's five or six. Yep, that's it. If you have I'm a knack not... in something, you roll two additional dice, two, right? Yes, you do. Yep. Yeah. yeah I've All right. Well. Am I supposed to have a knack? Because I don't have any knack. Um. <laughs> oh, yes, you should. You have three skills. That you have a knack. That's well spotted. The grave digger didn't start with any. Uh, if you want to pick three skills and click the the knack box next to them. You can okay, put them on yeah. anything. You don't have to be trained or mastered. They can literally, you can use knacks to represent areas where even though you're not skilled in it, you're naturally good at it. Okay, cool. Um, well, for the awareness one, I've got a six and a three. So that's one success there. Yep. I'll just add my knacks now. Yeah. Okay, I'll just type in the dice bag. Uh, oh, you can do, you can use the dice bag if you want to, or you can roll um, physical dice. I'm quite happy with either. Yeah, I like my physical dice, but I want somewhere yeah. to type it so yeah, I don't yeah. interrupt the chat. Yeah, and if yeah, if you want the if you need to use the formula for the dice bag, it's in the, um, in the introduction. Or you can see, yeah. Uh, so yeah, so we got two. Um, Dirge got one. Um, one from uh, Noella. Noella got one. And Piper, two. Excellent. So everyone's fairly um, got their eyes open. Um, you, everyone notices as you're sort of as um, Karloff is, is gesturing and sort of leading the he sort of almost sort of steps ahead now that he sort of knew, knows where he is he's like oh just up here and you can see at the end of the street um, there are three people but they are they're trying to sort of keep themselves not quite hidden but they're not like stood out in the middle of the street they're kind of leaning in doorways um, one's kind of like sort of crouched behind sort of like a, a pile of rubble Again, not hiding, but just, you know, put, tucking themselves where they're not quite um, obvious. Um, and uh, those of you who got two or, um, successes or more, you realise that all of them are wearing kind of um, like hoods and um, sort of like cowls, which you realise marks them out as members of one of the gangs of Haramir. Um, God, what's his name? The dude, <laughs> the uh, oh. courier, what's his name? Karloff. Karloff. Um, he kind of trips ahead. Mark Krug just grabs him by the shoulder and kind of shoves him back into the middle of the group and uh, reaches for his hatchet. 
It's all, he, he sort of goes, lets out like a little yelp. They're like, oh, uh, what, what, what's going on? Um, Piper will um, bring his flute to his lips and will start playing a very eerie tune. And if I can catch eye contact with one of uh, with one or more of these um, ruffians, I will mm -hmm. try and get a bit of eye contact and try and do a bit of a bit of a, a, a sort of like a um, you know make them think that there's that there's maybe something else going on. Excellent. Uh, Listen, do you want to make a, a perform roll or are you, are you going love for something to make particular? A perform roll. Yeah, yes. go on, make a perform roll, please. <clears throat> yeah, I knacked it, so. As <laughs> much as many opportunities to use it as possible. Yeah, three successes. Nice. Um, and so, what are you trying to do with your performance? Are you trying to instill, sort of, are you trying to attract Just their attention or creep no. them out? Yeah, creep them out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. Um, you, so, yeah, Piper, you begin playing this sort of creepy sort of sing-song dirge or something along those lines. What, sorry? No, no, sorry. Well, this is your, no, not your <laughs> dirge. <laughs> musical dirge. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so Piper begins playing this strange tune. And, yeah, they... They probably had already seen you, but now they definitely are paying attention to you. And they kind of, like, one of them, like, nudges the other one and points in your direction. And the three of them kind of maybe stand up out of their, where they're hiding. And they sort of, they're still stood at the entrance to, to the street that you want to go down. And they're kind of looking in your direction. Um, you see them, like, a couple of, like, two of them definitely, like, share a look. And they're sort of, the way they're moving, you think they definitely are a little bit sort of, like, unnerved by this this group who've turned up and then started playing this creepy song. Uh, what are you all doing? I've, um, I'm just carrying on walking at my slow pace, holding my mattock. Just, like, not high or anything, just beside yeah. my leg, plodding along. Uh, what about Nuala and McCrug? What are you doing? Nuala is uh, basically just following along with the group. She's had her rifle out this whole time, so it doesn't really change what she's doing at all. Cool. And McCrug, what are you doing? Are you just... McCrug uh, just kind of stares at them a little bit hungrily. Maybe a little bit too hungrily. Excellent. So yeah, if you're just sort of ambling up while Piper is still piping, um, eventually you get within sort of shouting distance and um, one of them sort of holds up a hand. Um, you're probably sort of, you know, 20, 20 feet or so away. And he goes, oh, right, that's that's far enough. Look, uh, what do you want? And he's sort of definitely shooting Piper looks. So sort of like, where's this, this person playing this creepy song while they're walking up? <laughs> Stop playing that. That's weird. <laughs> oh... <laughs> What's he doing? He's sort of looking at the rest of you. <laughs> I just put the mattock on my shoulder and, and give a grumble and just carry on walking towards him. Yeah, McCrug gets his hatchets out. Hatchet in one hand, pistol in the other, and just drags this vicious serrated hatchet on the ground, making a horrible scraping noise and just like grins hungrily. Nuala uh, is stopping, but uh, just to be a bit of distance away if something pops off. Yeah. Um, yeah, and uh, Karloff is probably hiding sort of behind Nuala. Um, sort of like, oh, um, which doesn't really work. She's yeah, yeah. Much smaller than him. <laughs> um, or sort of lurking near your shoulder. But um, yeah, so it sounds like. Uh, are you. Are you um, McCrug and Dirge, are you wanting to do some sort of intimidate? Are you trying to intimidate them because you're just sort of marching up? Yeah, yeah, I guess. Yeah, I'm just ignoring what they're I'm saying. just hungry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, yeah, so McCr uh, Dirge, do you want to make a, an intimidate check? D uh, McCrug, if you want to make an intimidate check, you can do, or are you just, you're, you're just sort of advancing on them and seeing what happens? Uh, fine, I'll make an intimidate check. <laughs> It's up to you. We'll or if, there's another, thing, whatever. if there's another skill check you want to make, you can do, make another one. I've got willpower. Um, is that related in any way? 
Uh, willpower is more about uh, mastering your own fears and and yeah. sort of like resisting things. So he's got a bit of a forceful personality, but yeah. I don't think that's the right to make. I'll just make an intimidate check. Yeah, sure. I got two on success. Oh, sorry. So um, Dirge, you got two. Yeah. And McCrug got one. Excellent. Um, yeah, so the, the, the pair of you together are definitely presenting quite a fearsome sort of presence. And the fact that, you know, uh, McCrug is just grinning and not stopping and, and Dirge has definitely got this huge two-handed mattock. Um, they, they sort of like, they, they sort of back off a little bit. And they're like, look, th this is our, our, our turf. You know, this is this is new cut gang top pro property. You can't come in here. W look, what do you want? Why are you here? Who are you? Where's your property title? <laughs> <laughs> Don't need one of them. It's, you know, th this place is, is ours. We came here. We, we took it over. It's ours. How close well, you see, we're the housing point. committee. Oh, what did you say, uh, Dirge? Piper's kept pe playing. How close are we at this? <laughs> nice. How, how close are we at this point? Uh, I mean, if you're keeping walking, they're they're sort of they're backing off, but they're they're you're probably within sort of a couple of feet of them now. I just like um, as they're talking, I just sort of ready the mattock to to swipe at whoever's closer, but I don't yet. More like a, a show that I'm not taking on what they're saying. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, Pe Pi Piper. What were you saying? Just that Piper's constantly playing throughout, basically. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, he might as as these two approach, he might kind of add a sort of like uh, a sort of like a, a more sort of base ominous sort of uh, um, <laughs> sort of twist to the theme. Amazing. Um, yeah, I mean, you basically you get to a certain point, and you're you're now like basically at the entrance to the street. You can see the um, Catgut Street, as Karloff called it, is this long, quite broad street that runs quite straight um, and you can see there's houses of um, like shops either side of it. it looks like this might have been sort of yeah like a sort of a slightly commercial part of the shambles um, much of it looks abandoned um, part of it looks partially collapsed some of the houses have sort of burnt and collapsed in on themselves um, but you can see about halfway down the street there is this really impressive for the shambles um, structure um, you know, rather than just sort of the, the simple um, clapboard and slate houses that you, you see here, this was like a, a like a, a large multi-story tavern kind of thing. Um, looks at the sort of the front facade you can see looks mostly intact. All those you know windows are boarded up and some are broken. Um, but this that, that definitely and you can even see a sign that says "Best Luxury Hotel." Um, that looks where you're where you need to get to. And as you, you sort of push yourselves forwards, these three sort of thugs like fall back to a certain point and then they kind of realise that you're sort of pushing them back into their own turf. And the sort of the, the lead one who's this sort of big sort of lantern jawed guy, um, quite dirty looking clothing, um, and it looks like he's got a sort of a club in his hand, um, and this sort of um, sort of faded blue sort of mantle and hood pulled over his head he sort of realises, he sort of looks at the other two realises he's kind of, he's being pushed into a situation and then sort of stops and like puts a hand out and probably almost puts it on either, who's in the lead McCrug or Dirge, both side by side I, I figured we'd be together Yeah, I don't uh, know. he probably he probably puts it on like McCrug's chest and like sort of pushes you back and is like, alright, look, you can't go any further you know, boss said no ins, no outs. I don't care what kind of weird tune you're, you're playing. You know, the circus <laughs> isn't in town. Get out of here. And he kind of trying to tries to sort of make a stand. I'll just uh, I'll stop playing and say oh, everyone's a critic. <laughs> I, I'd like to do an underhand swipe. That is lantern jaw. Okay, excellent. So what uh, with a uh, with your matic or with a with a with fist? the matic? Yeah, I'm just oh, excellent. It's been like prepped ready on my shoulder I'm just gonna like sweep cool. it under to try and get his jaw well this sounds I'm gonna like do it as a, a mighty blow as well yep yeah, it sounds like we're launching into initiative but uh, I would say that counts as a surprise um, bonus for you so these guys aren't really expecting you to kick off into combat just yet so uh, initiative is if you roll a number of dice equal to your physique 
uh, but you count it as if you were trained. So you're looking at fours or more. Um, and um, as uh, you get a surprise round, everyone adds an additional 2d6. Okay. That's a lot of dice. Um. <laughs> fours or more? One, yes. Two, three, I got four. Excellent. I only got one. Yeah, I, I got, got five. five. Well. <laughs> I got one on six dice. <laughs> oh. So, Piper's on one. Um, Dirge is on four. Uh, McCrug is on five. Noala is on one. Noala is on one. And I will roll for the thugs. They are on one. <laughs> um, there are three thugs. There's four of you. Karloff is not acting. Karloff is just like, <laughs> as as uh, Dirge swings his mattock up, Karloff like lets out a low moan. Oh no! <laughs> um, but some somehow, as so Dirge steps forward, swings this mattock in this arc, and McCrug, you you've already kind of you see what's about to go down, so you act faster than Dirge. So what is McCrug doing? I'm going to grab Lantern. Uh, job by the throat and tell him that he can either turn around or I can eat guts for dinner. Um, is that going to be... Uh, are you going to try and use a skill to try and sort of intimidate him in combat? I'm guessing... I've got... Should I use athletic or fight? I'm better at fight, but I think this is more... Yeah, you can try... Oh, yeah, the other thing is you can try and um, effectively grapple him. So, if which would... Make him That's easier true. to hit. Yeah. Um, I'm not familiar with the grapple rules. Like so books. basically, you just make, make an attack roll as normal. So make a fight check. And if you're mm -hmm. successful, then you grapple him. Um, counts as being helpless for the purpose of attacks being made against him. They cannot move or take any other action apart from trying to escape. Um, and on your turn, you can choose to either maintain the hold or release him. Okay. Um, I'm going to grapple him. I got three successes. Excellent. Well, these are minions, which means that they only ever take the dodge um, defense action, and they have a set dodge value of one. Um, so you have easily grabbed him. So he, he just he sees you sort of, or he maybe he doesn't even see you. He's still looking at, at Dirge, and you just reach out and grab this poor mook by the neck and like pinion him, and he's sort of like helpless in your grasp. Uh, is there anything else now. you want to do? That was, that was a primary action. You've got a secondary action if you want to try and move around. You could drag him with you if you want to move. I'll put my pistol up against his head, drag mm -hmm. him back towards the group, and just, like, tell him, you have one more chance. Okay, yeah, excellent. You sort of hold him. So, um, on he's completely helpless. On four, Dirge. So you're you're swinging, and, and then McCrug faster than you can react, reaches out and grabs this guy. Um, you can change your target and do something else. What do you want to do? Hmm. I am quite slow, so I was... I, I was <laughs> my crook takes him away and, like, stops me from hitting him, I guess. So that's fine. I'll just sort of... Um, I don't know, can I, can I change target? Uh, how close are they? Can I, like, um, uh, change all... the target? Or? Yeah, yeah, they were all sort of clustered up, so yeah, you can easily swing into one of the other two. I'll just swing into the one closest then. Okay, the so make, the lead make a, particularly. Yeah, make a fight check. And again, so these guys are minions. If it's mastered, that's a four or more? A uh, three or more. Three or more, okay. One, two, three. I got three successes. Yep, yeah, so again, they, they try and dodge. Um, but you easily, so this massive two-handed mattock slams into one of these poor unfortunates. So roll your damage. Ooh, okay. Um, 7, 11, 21. What? How much? 21 damage. 21 damage, good grief. <laughs> <laughs> um, so these, uh, these guys are mooks, um, or uh, minions rather. Um, they have um, a set amount of um, health um, and 
uh, the rules with minions is, uh, well, rules for everyone. If you in inflict more than 10 damage in a single blow, you take a wound. Minions have a special rule where if you take a single wound, they are instantly dead. Uh, so <laughs> you're, this, uh, how do you kill this poor, like, helpless thug who's sort of looking like they, they com you completely got the drop on them. They've, they've pulled out, like, knives and clubs. And then what do you do to this poor, poor person? Well, it's like a an underhand swing with it with the, the flat part to go oh. under the jaw like an uppercut with, with the matic so I just took it and swung it up to the to the bottom of the the head so I guess just clocks and knocks him back and uh, yeah yeah lands on the top a pile yeah. of meat yeah maybe goes back <laughs> a couple of feet amazing as, like, as I do it like my feet seem like abnormally rooted to the ground amazing uh yeah so this this th there is a, a a huge crack and this this thug travels a couple of feet feet lands in a, in a heap and just lets out a, a death rattle uh on one everyone else acts so first of all the player characters then the thugs so um piper and noella what are you both doing is uh, there, um, piper's is, gonna is <laughs> all right, right. First of all, Piper. <laughs> sorry, Piper. Right, sorry. Is there um, um, an, another thug other than the, the like the, the leader who was? There is. Yes. Yeah. There's, so there was two thugs. There was a, a, a man and a woman. The, the man just got turned into hamburger. So there's a, a sort of a slim, ratty-looking woman, sort of holding a knife and looking wide-eyed at her friend. Um, are there any shadows nearby? Um, yes, yeah, it's fairly said it's very gloomy around here. So if I just kind of like slink back into the shadow of some doorway mm -hmm. um, and then spend um, a point of, I um, can't remember what it's called in this game. Resolve. 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 Um, and then I'll just kind of pop out behind her in the shadow next to her and then um, uh, give her a kind of a quick sort of like double stab. Excellent. Uh, yeah, that sounds fine. So yeah, spend your resolve and make a fight check. And while that's happening, what's um, Noella doing? Um, she is going to shoot whoever is left. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So this, there's this. The, there's um, one is being held by the throat by McCrug, and the other one is this this thug who is this um, sort of pinch-faced woman who's holding a knife and looking like she just realised how much trouble she's in. So. <laughs> You can shoot her if you want. Um, I think I'm going to shoot the guy that McBride's the corpse. <laughs> yeah, yeah, excellent. Okay, <laughs> cool. Um, yeah, they, you can you can shoot into close combat. That's absolutely fine. Um, does mean they get to dodge it, but unfortunately, this guy's being pinioned. So, um, yeah. Uh, oh, shoot to uh, my back. Using a ranged weapon in close combat, you add a two d six penalty to your attack roll. So if you roll. Um, roll your normal attack, and then you need to roll an extra 2d6, and if you get a 5 or a 6 on either of them, you lose a success. Right. Is, so that ends up with one success. Okay, that's still a hit. Rob, is two-weapon fighting penalty, is that a penalty dice or a dice? It's a... It's a so, uh, which two weapons are you using? Um, I'm using my... Um, my flute, which I'm saying counts as a dueling cane. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm using a uh, short sword. Excellent. Well, both of those weapons have the light quality, yeah. uh, which means you add one d6 penalty to the second attack. So you roll a roll a roll an extra d6, and if that comes up with a five or a six, you lose a success from the second attack. Right. So it doesn't. So I've got four successes on the first one, mm -hmm. um, and three successes on the second. Excellent. Yep. So both of you roll some damage because you have both hit. Nineteen. Amazing. And <laughs> um, that is an, another insta kill. Fine. You've inflicted I was wrong. more than fifteen. Fifteen. <laughs> that's still an insta kill. These guys have got no armor on. Um, I've so got you seven and five. From seven and two. five. Um, unfortunately, that is not an insta kill. Surprisingly, um, the you have inflicted damage on this this poor unfortunate, and they don't look happy about it. But they are still alive. 
Um, so, yeah, so um, Piper steps backwards and just vanishes and then steps out of the shadows behind this this thug and sinks two weapons into her. Um, and she lets out a, 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 a horrified, shocked scream. Um, mm-hmm. And then uh, what does Nuala say? How do you kill this this poor unfortunate? McCrug has got him by the throat. And then what do you do? Just right between the right between the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, McCrug, you're holding this guy by the throat, and then suddenly his head just vaporizes as a musket goes off. Um, um, is that it? Uh, no. Well, so there is one thug left who. Um, uh, Piper oh, just right. stabbed in the back. She lets out a, a screech, um, spins around to see that somehow you're behind her, uh, looks at the mess that the rest of you have made of her th- friends, and will turn and just flee down the street, yelling, Help! We're under attack! Oh! And just, just is running as fast as she can go. So she uh, will take a, a movement action running away from you guys, and that is basically all she's going to do because she's panicking. Um, well, there goes the non-violent option, Craig whispers, as he just <laughs> drops the vaporized body. And we go back up, we're still technically in, in, com- in combat, because she's only run, um, she's run a, a grand total of, uh, oh god, what's the movement in this? Go on, brain. Um, it's her physique plus, is it 10? 12. So she's run 12 yards away. Um, so she's still quite close. Um, so back on five, McCrug. Just going to take the pistol out that I was pointing to now just minimized um, Thug's head and just point it straight at her and fire. Excellent. Yeah. Um, so make a shoot roll, please. Mm. Is that a fight? That is a fight uh, roll, right? No, it's shoot. No? Shoot. Okay, yeah. Duh, shoot. I was... <laughs> oh, you can you can try um, and beat her with the pistol, but <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's still in. She's yeah, she's still, still in range of my. In fact, um, what's the range of a pistol? The range is. I don't have it marked on here. I think it's fifty. Um, which yeah, means it's something like that. You are at um, close range, which means you get a, bo- a bonus d6 to your attack roll. Okay, um, that would be five dice. One of them said jump off. That is, yeah, one success. Uh, that is still a hit, so roll your damage. She, uh, she has a dodge value of one, so you need, just need to get one success or more, and you've hit her. All right. I'm sorry, I never really counted on using the pistol. <laughs> He's more of a physical guy. Yeah, <laughs> just, just there for that purpose. Okay, um, 2d6. That's 9 damage. Uh, yeah, how do you kill this poor unfortunate? She's sprinting up the street away from you. Can I use Mighty Blow? Uh, you can. If on you a just range play. attack? Yes, you can. Uh, so you okay. spend spend a resolve to increase the damage. Yeah, I spend one resolve to increase the damage by two d six. Amazing. That's just three. Uh, well, <laughs> it's, yeah, she is definitely dead. How how <laughs> how, how, how does she die? Just shoot her in the back as she was running like a coward. Excellent. Yeah, you just blast her straight between the shoulder blades, and she just goes down and dies. That's a war crime, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Deserters. <laughs> Noella just leans in from the side. <laughs> That's a war crime. <laughs> uh, That's probably why the crow is no longer in the military. Like, I think she just like mutters that to herself, and uh, <laughs> our poor little civvy. Is <laughs> is just like horrified. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes. Carl officers like well, uh, it's sort of like oh, um, luckily I, she didn't get far, and she was although she was shouting bloody murder. I mean, you have just fired two um, cap lock weapons, so it's quite loud. <laughs> but maybe that's announced your intentions. Um, the the street is quiet for a few moments. Um, what are you guys doing 
in the immediate aftermath of this as the combat ends. Yes, I am three dead searching bodies. their pockets. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. I'm going in at Karloff to come along and stop being a like, coward. Reload yep. my pistol and um, rip out the guy's eyeball. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Where is the eyeball going? Straight in the, straight um, in the mouth. mouth for a snack? Yeah. Straight in the mouth. <laughs> He's kind of um, like hiding this. He's just like kind of hunched over the body, just like, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, no answer, no answer. <laughs> uh, you rummaging in their pockets, um, you find a, a couple of mixed handfuls of shillings, uh, mostly sort of pennies, but a couple of um, ravens, the silver coins. Um, all in all, it's probably worth about sixty shillings. You turn up. Oh. Plus, they've um, there's a couple. Um, a, two two of them have got long knives, and the the lead guy has got a sort of a club, which basically looks like a sort of a, a polished table leg that's seen some use. Um, Piper will be um, rather than engaging in this sort of petty larceny. Uh, <laughs> um, he'll he'll probably be um, slinking into the shadows and keeping an eye out. Yep. Um, so yeah, important oh, question: hmm. Do they have any snacks? Um, yeah, you probably turn up like a, a sort of a bit of questionable jerky and um, maybe a, a hip flask of something. Cool, uh, jerky in the mouth, uh, flask in in a pocket. Yep. Yeah, for a quick sniff, it sounds, smells like something that's been made in someone's bathtub. But you know, sick. Um. Karloff is sort of yeah, like probably tugging at someone's sleeve and pointing at the um, the tavern or the inn, and basically going, "It's that that's it, just there. We should we should get inside before more of them turn up." You know, start uh, plodding you... towards there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, you you head in that direction. Um, as you're getting near to the the the, the inn, you can hear there is a bit of commotion. You can hear sort of yelling down the end of the street. Um, and you can possibly see figures. Um, you, it's if you hustle, you can make it into the hotel before they see you. Um, are you? Is everyone running in there and, and sort of taking cover, or are you sort of ambling I and seeing what run. happens? <laughs> yeah, Dirge is going to have a hard time. Um, does anyone else want to go first? No, well, that's good. That's all I had to say. Was I can't run. <laughs> Noel is just going to stay with the group, whatever they do. Yep. McCrug kind of looks back sadly at the uh, fallen people, despite, you know, giving into his urge and their eyeballs. Um, that wasn't really his intention. He's just kind of sad about it. And then he just kind of walks forward into the hotel. Okay. Yeah. And you, you guys, you duck into the hotel, even with Dirge being sort of slow and purposeful, you manage to get inside. Um, you step in and, um, sort of the doors uh, are, are intact enough that you can swing them closed. And you think you've got a bit of cover for now. Um, inside the hotel, although it looked mostly intact from the front, as soon as you step inside, you realise that there is there's significant damage to this building. Um, the It looks like it would have been maybe not grand, but at least nice in here. There's like a, a wide hallway and there's some stairs going up and like a little counter where you assume people would have checked in. Um, but all the wood is warped. Um, the paper on the walls is peeling it's quite gloomy and dark in here and through the sort of the, the doorway ahead of you into what would you assume being like a dining room you can see that the the building slopes downward in the center and there is a huge sinkhole in the center of this hotel in fact you can hit, like smell fresh air and looking up you can see that the ceiling has collapsed in it looks like the whole hotel has got caved in on its center and it looks like most of the hotel has collapsed down into its basement All right, Karloff, where's the safe? Uh, it, it was in the, the manager's office. Um, he sort of, again, opens his book, and you can see he's got like a, like a, a building plan inside. And he's like, um, it should be uh, through here. And he sort of leads you through a side, a side door behind the counter, like sort of presses the door, pushes it, and it's sort of stuck in the frame. And he sort of like throws his shoulder against it and then whimpers and sort of looks at the rest of you. Um, <laughs> seems, seems stuck. Is there any like loose rocks or rubble or 
like timber that I can just wedge the door with. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, make a, you can easily pick up like a loose timber, and if you want to make a fortitude check to try and break it down. Uh, yeah, so that's. It's not athletics. Mac is plus yes. two. D- uh, D6. You could use athletics or fortitude would work. Either either or. Fortitude can be used for like feats of br- of brute strength. Athletics is sort of like climbing, but also yeah, you could use you could. I'm quite happy for people to argue to use athletics for like busting stuff down. Is mastered four plus or three plus? Three plus. Because I got six successes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> 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 So yeah, or is stardust. <laughs> you the so dirge steps up and you just what do you just batter it down with the um the piece of wood or do you pry it open? I just like pry it. I don't like bash it. I just pull it and then yep. wedge it into to the door that we just came into. And it, with that many successes, you you think that had you just sort of kicked this open and maybe not done quite a good job with it, it might have, as the as you pull the door open, the hotel lets out a long groan and almost sort of seems to shift in its foundation. But with that many successes, you kind of jam the timber into the door frame and, and the groaning stops almost as quickly as it starts. <laughs> but it does does make you realise that this hotel is probably like uh, structurally unsound. <laughs> no more ripping it to pieces. <laughs> um, I will go... God, I just talk too much. Um, <laughs> I'll go towards the front of the door away from the sinkhole and uh, just kind of see if I can look outside to see if they're getting closer. Yeah, yeah. Um, you can see outside. You can hear like commotion. You can hear like they're, they're all dead. This, uh, they, they, someone's killed them. And you can hear like someone else going split up, search the place, work out who this was. Was it was it one of the other gangs? And you can like see like people down the end of the street running about. It doesn't look like a lot Hurry of them. Up, guys. But... Yeah, I think Lala, like sidles up to like by a window to like back against the wall like head poking around just to keep an eye out as well mm. and uh, as um dirge you pry the door open you can see that there, there was this would this room would have been like a, a small office um but everything beyond the doorway is just gone and there is a like a just a void down um into sort of darkness um there's like a desk teetering on the edge um, and as you sort of glance in, it sort of sl- slides a couple of inches and then stops sort of hanging over this void. Karloff like, looks over and goes, oh, if the safe's anywhere, it's down in the basement. It, it, they're, they're solid things, though. It's probably still intact down there. How far What's going on back there? Um, it looks like it's, it's the next floor down, so it's probably sort of 10, 12 feet deep. Um, but it's it's all like a jumble of timbers. It's quite dark, so you'd need to actually climb down in there to actually explore it. Is there a door to the basement anywhere immediately in line of sight? Um, not immediately in line of sight. If you ask Karloff, he'll sort of check on his things and sort of, uh, there, there should be a staircase. Um, uh, he points to it like a cupboard under the stairs. That should lead down there. What's the deal with boons? How, like, how many times can you use a boon? Um, you can use, so your, um, burst of life boon, you can use it once per scene. And your boon, so a scene is, um, think in theatrical terms, sort of like, you know, between, um, fade in and fade out. So, um, you're now in a new scene. The, the, out in the street was a scene. Now you're in a a fresh scene. So if you wanted to use that, yeah. So, um, your burst of life, you can cause, um, living plants to undergo a brief moment of accelerated growth and unnatural movement. To use this boon, the character must concentrate on a piece of living vegetation within 50 yards. The target instantly becomes huge and overgrown. Uh, the exact effects of this sudden burst of growth are variable and should be determined by the player and the games master where the boon is used. So, yeah, if you want, there are, like, bits of plant life around here. There's some mould. There's, like, a couple of weeds poking up through the floorboards. Okay. God, using that on this... mould would be horrifying. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> if, um... If there's some staircase, then we'll just go down the staircase. Mm. But that, thank you for explaining that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, I mean, you open the cupboard under the stairs, and the stairs 
are there, but again, they're splintered and broken. You could you can climb down them, but it's going to take some 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 skill, or you could try and yeah, like clamber your way down the side of the sinkhole. Um, either way, or you can do something. You could use um yeah, a boon or an edge. I'd like to use my boon to to massively grow some of the weeds so that the roots clamber down to the basement. Yeah, and then yeah, sort of to make yourself a a, a ladder. Yeah, just yeah. sort of like grab them and, and let them pull me down. Yeah, and uh, yeah, you could, the the um, the plants created by this boon are never very long lasting. They um, expend all of their energy in a flurry of activity and quickly collapse into unpleasant green slime after one hour or at the end of the scene. So okay, yeah, cool. this huge like uh, so well yeah. Do you want to describe how it happens? Yeah, so just like some little twiddly weeds start like growing bigger. The leaves just get really broad, and then the roots just like start mangling down into like a a web, and it just just slowly go, grows down into the basement as the giant weed that ends up being like, oh. Well, Eleven foot Water tall is just like <laughs> sprouting out, looking like some jacked up uh, bell sprout. <laughs> Amazing, excellent. Uh, um, yeah, so you, hanging on the you... roots as they're growing, just slowly sinking down. Like, come on, go now. Yeah, so all of you see this happen, and is everyone clambering down? Is what's everyone? Re- how's everyone react? Nuala is going to stay by the window to keep an eye out. Mm-hmm. I think she's going to pass off the key to somebody. <laughs> Forgot about that. Oh, Krugger, you take it back down. to him. Yeah, I'll go okay. down. Yeah, yeah uh, Nuala hands the key off to McCrug then. Cool. Thanks. Piper, Piper what are you doing? Um, yeah, I'm just I'm very impressed with the uh... Um, with what is it, Dirge? Who did the um, yeah, mm. yeah, very impressive what Dirge has just done. And um, and I'll be, I'll uh, give a pat on the back and say, That's an impressive chap. Um, mm-hmm. may I some gesture that I want to sort of like go down, follow, follow down after him? Are you asking if you're allowed? Yeah, you just doing it. Oh, no, I just like nodding and grunt. Right, and I'll um, deftly, acrobatically, maybe even sort of mm. like uh, light step down these uh, vines. Yeah, and, roots and the, the the handholds provided by this, as these are specifically grown, this is much easier to climb down. It's it's almost like you've got a rope and grapnel, so all of you can descend down without any issue. Um, or those of you going down, so um, Nuala stays up top. Um, Karloff will sort of clamber down um probably not too bad he's he's not that inept um and uh, you'll end up down in what was obviously the basement and again it looks like looking up you can see sort of four floors worth of building above you and it's all sort of just collapsed down into this basement it's just that down here it's a mess of timber and rubble and like beds and desks and chairs um and as you step into the, the sort of the, the mess of the basement. Um, you also see small polished white orbs and sticks poking out of the, the masonry here, and then you suddenly realise it's bones and skulls and ribs and teeth ribs. scattered amongst the debris. Um, uh, it's quite obviously like a charnel house. Something has scattered bones here, and these aren't people buried in the collapse of the, the hotel. This is Picked bones clean. scattered here and picked clean. Um, and uh, I will need everyone to make a horror check, which is a willpower check. Oh, nice. Except for me. Cause yeah, because you're not there. there. You're staring out the window. <laughs> Are any of them coming like close Three to the successes. hotel at all? Uh, not at the moment, no. They they are running up and down the street. Um, they sort of seem to have split up into search crews, um, but they mostly seem to be concentrated down the, the end of the street where you left the bodies, um, and they haven't come down this far yet. Cool. Uh, did Three anyone successes. get at least one success? Did anyone get no successes? Four from McCrug. Piper, what did you get? I got three. 
Excellent. So no one is. This, the, you've all seen worse than a pile of bones. Uh, <laughs> no one's worse than a pile of bones. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, oh, I'll roll for for Karloff. Um, even he's not too phased, actually. Um, mm-hmm. He looks around and sort of goes, "Oh, this is disconcerting." Um, <laughs> Money. <laughs> um, but yes, you you look around. Um, from the sort of the shadows, um, you can hear like chittering and scuttling, um, and you see a couple of rats. Nothing too large. These are just sort of common or garden rats. Um, but there is definitely, yeah, something has, has picked these bones clean down here. Um, <laughs> can I um, kneel down and try and beckon one of the rats over with vermin tongue? And try yes. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. So spend um, a resolve. Ask it. Yeah, so... Uh, do, I, do I spend a resolve for my boon, sorry? Sorry? Do I spend no, no, a resolve no. for my boon? Oh, okay. No, uh, boons do not cost resolve. That is the, 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 the great thing about them. Um, so, yeah, so you, you bend down, and to everyone else, um, Piper is speaking normally. Um, but as he begins speaking, uh, a rat, sort of climbs out the, the, the rubble and hesitantly sort of approaches Piper and just begins making lots of little squeaking, chipping noises at him, like rats do. Uh, but to uh, Piper, you can actually hear the rat wanders over and goes, what do you want? If I have vermin tongue, can I hear it as well? Or is it like, uh, if, if you, you have if to you, go in that if action? You, no, if you spend a resolve, you can listen in. I'll do that. So again, yeah, you you can hear this rat talking in a tiny piping voice. Uh, yeah, sort of wanders over and goes, what do you want? Um, I say, I say, hello, friend. I'll give him a, a little sort of little bit of a treat of some some food I've got. Um, um, and, and I'll um, so what we're we saying. Um, yes, there's um a lot a lot of bones here. Is there some is there some bigger creature that's been here? Um, bringing oh. these along. And, uh, oh yes, yes, big, big creatures, but tall, tall ones like you, uh, the, 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 the angry ones, the ones that smell of blood. They, they, there's a nest down there. They, they come up at night time, and and then they take things back. And oh, they, they leave us treats here. We, we eat well off the, the scraps. Not that they leave many. No, no. And then, how many of them are there in this nest? Oh, uh the uh, the rat sort of briefly tries to count and realizes rats can't count. Um, <laughs> lots. <laughs> yes, lots. <laughs> One many lots. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's he, he, basically the rat can't count, but he it just says lots. And and there is. The big one as well, down there. They are scared of it. Deep down. It doesn't come up much. But but deep, deep down, we, we don't go down there. It it will eat us. It, it, it prefers bigger prey, but little prey it will take as well. Oh, thank you, friends. You've been very helpful. It sort of finishes nibbling the, the little whatever you handed it and, and sort of watches its paws and sort of looks up and then maybe looks up at um, Dirge as well and sort of... Anything else? What's it saying? See you next time. I ask it what if it knows what a safe is. Yeah, I, I'll try and um, I'll, I'll, I'll say, what, what colour's the safe? Uh, you'd assume like cast iron, sort of black. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So um, we're looking for a black box about, and then I'll try and sort of gesture and eye contact with um, Carson to try and get the not Carson, is he, what's he called? Karloff. 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 Karloff to, try, to, to try and get an estimate of the size of the, size of the box. But big box, metal this big. So, have you seen something like that? Yeah, he, sort of, he looks between you and Dirge as you're both describing a safe and sort of seems to think and goes, big, heavy, heavy thing. Yes, fell, fell down. So, seen it. Full slide down and sort of looks in the direction of like a, a hole, and you can see that where the, the the hotel has collapsed, there is sort of like a almost like a slalom where like stuff has like slid down into like a, a further part of the the basement. Down there, 
slip down there. And how close is that to where these um, angry ones are, the big one is? Oh, yes, down there, down there, nice and dark. They like it nice and dark. Down there. Right. Oh, okay. um, I light up my lantern and start walking that way. Yep. <laughs> Um, cool. Did you guys tell McCrug what's going on? Um, yeah, I'll fill, I'll fill everybody. Oh, yeah, yeah, McCrug, <laughs> McCrug just you've just you, you and Karloff have stood there watching while these two are basically get, like ch- talking. That you can hear their side of the conversation, but the rat is just going <laughs> and squeaking back, and uh, you can't hear. Like, you don't understand what it's saying. <laughs> Should we get in a wala? Um... Smash cut to the wall. Probably... Like, yeah, yeah. What's the <laughs> yeah. doing? You're, you're stood up and out yeah. to see out the window still. Give, give yeah. a signal whistle, Piper. No. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, you can go ahead and do that, but then McCarg's like, "Wait, we should probably not alert the people outside that we're in here." Yeah. Mm. Otherwise, we'll get trapped in between <laughs> the things and the. Although goons. I can probably get up to it fairly quickly. Yeah, yeah. Now my... that the, the the vines are still there and they will stay there, so you can clamber back up and and signal yeah. Nawala. Yeah. All right. Uh, but yeah. Oh, go on. Nawala will come down. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't. It looks like they're slowly sweeping the 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 street, but they haven't worked out where you are, and there are quite a few houses between you and them, so they're they're taking their time. And if we uh, go right down, they probably do, won't sorry. know we're here anyway, will they? True. Do do I have like an estimate on when they would? get to the hotel based on their pace so far? Um, yeah, you think maybe, um, I mean, they seem to be going quite slowly and quite paranoid, so you think maybe you've got an hour or so? Alright, I think I'd relay that. Yeah. We have also, um, one last question mm. to the rats. Um, is there another way out? Or is it just through the hotel? Um, so what have you, Piper or Dirge relays this, I assume. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, um, yeah. Um, well, I've, I've started walking, so I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. the the rat sort of thinks and then sort of, uh, yes, go, go down, down, all the way down, leads into strange smell place. But, but stra- strange smell place can go down, can, can find other ways up into, up into this place, uh, into other parts of of um great feeding ground um we don't go down there though S- strange smell place not not for us many long dead things down there yeah okay <laughs> right so we have a nest of what the uh, our, our little friend here, our fairy friend here, refers to as angry ones, and then further down we have a big one. We can Powerful or to, ghouls? We can speculate as to what those may be. Yes, things like sorrowful ghouls, um, ragged maybe. Um, but, um, yeah, but the um, the safe is down there too. Great. I uh, say we continue on. I second that. Excellent. Um, you carry on down then. Um, so, yes, yeah, so um, Dirge has lit their lantern. Uh, what is your lantern? It's a uh, candle whale lantern. Oil. Oh, whale oil. Uh, so nice, bright light sort of out in front of you. Is anyone else lighting any uh, light sources or are you just uh, going by the one lantern? I'll take a torch. Um, yep. um, if it comes to combat, I can just throw it on the ground, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah. All right. <clears throat> so yeah, and, so you pull out a torch yeah. and light that. Um, which sheds a decent amount of light as well, so you can all see fairly well. the The basement it gets quite dark and cramped, and you can see where it sort of slides down, um, where like things you think like heavier objects have fallen as the the hotel collapsed. 
and the floorboards have kind of like landed in like a big um raft of timbers and then sort of um sort of almost formed like a sort of a, a funnel leading down and then you realize you're passing down through into the earth where maybe some sort of like sinkhole has opened and there's sort of there's rough earth and stone around you it sort of opens into maybe do you think maybe a partially collapsed sewer and you can see there's bones scattered down here as you're trek like trekking down and the sort of the smell of of earth and like rotting timbers and other worse things and as you're p picking your way down i will take a stealth check from everyone please Ooh. had a feeling oh physique okay that's not as easy. <laughs> Zero successes. Oh, nice. Zero Three. successes. <laughs> oh, nice. Three for pack. Well, how stealthy are we, considering we're carrying light sources? Well, that is something I factor into it. So the, the things that could see you get a bonus. So they have to beat the highest score that everyone got, which sounded like, was it two? Three. Or was it? Three. Three. Uh, but they do get bonus dice because you are waving around a bright light. Um. And as you're picking your way down, um, the you're sort of traveling down through this sort of like rough, you think it is like a sewer. You can see there's like bits of brick here and there, and there's water dripping down from the walls around you. Every now and then you can see there is like um, a piece of like pottery or um, a couple of sp spilt um, bits of uh, furniture down here. So you can see there's definitely bits from the hotel have come down here and like slid down this sort of channel. And up ahead of you, you can see it sort of opens out into like a like a wider area, like some sort of like chamber or something. And then ahead of you, you hear a hiss, and you see eyes glittering in the lantern light. And out of the chamber come sprinting a number of sorrowful. Uh, these are people who have been infected by the sorrow plague. Um, blood drips from their eyes. Um, their limbs have sort of become long and sort of unnatural as their arms have stretched and their fingers have become long and sort of clawed. Um, they're filthy and sort of scruffy and they've got sort of old injuries on them and they're sort of clutching like rusted like axes and knives and tools as um, they come sprinting up out of the, the sort of sewer at you guys. Um, there are four of them as they come running out of the sewer. Excellent. Right, yes, so you are descending and, yeah, these um, Sorrowful have come bursting out of the their, their nest, but they've caught you in the sort of the entrance to their nest. It's this um, sort of rough sewer. It's probably wide enough for two of you to stand abreast. So who was in the lead? I think I was in the lead with the lamp. Yep, and who was stood next to Dirge? Um, I could go with Dirge. Um... Yep. Peter, I mean Piper. God, Peter Piper. I just think Peter Piper. <laughs> Piper, are you uh, are you kind of squishy? <laughs> Am I what? Sorry. Yeah, I mean I could stand in front. I probably will. <laughs> yeah, I mean Piper's Piper's sort of stealthy, so if you're trying to be, if I was trying to be stealthy, maybe Piper would be leading it. I'm, I'm fine wherever. Yep, excellent. So, yeah, sounds like Dirge and McCrug were up, up the front. Uh, let us take an initiative check. So, um, again, it's a number of dice equal to your physique, but fours or more. Um, there is no surprise this round because these things heard you coming. Mm. Or right, they saw you coming because they saw your torch play. Oh, I got four. I got one. But uh, I'm going to spend a point of resolve to use quick reflexes. Yep. Um, I'm trying to think, does that give something special on the first turn? I think it's just 2d6. It's 2d6, yep. Yeah, nothing special about it. All right. Uh, Noala, what did you get? Two. Two. Uh, Piper got one. One. Dirge got. Yeah, I got two. Four. <laughs> Four. And McCrug got, sorry, was that? Two. Two. Sorry. That's oh, right. Uh, it's my fault for uh, not listening. So on four, Dirge, as these sorrowful come sprinting up the sewer towards you, um, what do you do? You react first. What are you doing? Uh, how many are there? There are four of them. Okay. 
So I'll turn around and, and put my, my lantern on the floor behind us. Yep. And I'd just go like to take a step forward and just swipe at whichever one is closest yep. that I can I can get. Sounds good. So that's the fight. Right. Yep. And these are again minions with the dodge average of one, so you just need to get one success or more. That's good, can I have four? And I got one success. <laughs> <laughs> well, you still Ooh. even though it's a clumsy blow, you still managed to connect, so roll your damage. There's still a lot of damage for my weapon. Um, one, four, ten, sixteen, twenty one. Good grief. Um <laughs> again this is <laughs> Dirge has got this big dirty mattock and it slams into the first of the Sorrowful and instantly kills them. They, they've taken, you've inflicted more than 10 damage in a single attack so they take a wound and as they're minions that kills them. So uh, yeah, you flatten this poor Sorrowful as it sprints towards you. Um, Can't be Sorrowful if it's dead. Yeah. Uh, uh, that was, are you doing anything else with your secondary action or you, I suppose you moved a little bit but is there any yeah, other... I'm, I'm... I put the lantern down. I oh, yeah, good point. The secondary action first. <laughs> yep, that sounds good. Um, and then on to Nuala and McCrug. Um, Nuala's going to take a shot. Cool. Can she okay? see? Uh, I mean, yeah, with the ranged weapon, it's probably easy enough for, McCru uh, for Nuala to sort of lean round and shoot past. It's loud, uh, and no one will probably appreciate it. But yeah, you can, you can, you can shoot. <laughs> um. As a secondary action, can I throw something? Yep. Or is that a... All right. Uh, okay, I'm going to throw... Are you throwing to injure or just throwing something? I'm going to throw the torch at the Sorrowful so she can see better. Is it a she? Yep. I'm sorry. Yeah. Nuala is she there. Yep. Okay. So I yeah, throw so the yeah, torch. Can... Definitely, yeah. Uh, so she can see better and she... Cool. Uh, I got um, two successes. That is a hit, so you can roll some damage. And uh, McCrug, what are you doing with your other action? Um, I can still hit, right? Yes, you can. Yeah. They're in range. Um, I'm gonna hit them with my vicious axe. Um, my roll, bite, and axe. That's three successes. That is a hit. So please roll some damage. So you strike the the next one that sort of the after the one that was um, that Dirge killed. And Noala, you fire. How much damage did you do? I did uh, eleven damage. Uh, okay. Yeah. They. That is. Oh. Uh, they don't have armor. That is enough to kill them in a single hit. So again, you gun gun one of them down as it's storming up the uh, the sewer towards you. Headshots all day, baby. <laughs> I deal thirteen damage with the vicious axe. Wow. Uh, and again, you. Cleave. You've done more than ten damage, so you inflict a wound, and as they're minions, that takes it out. So within the sort of the first few seconds of this fight, you've cut through the the, the, the lead three. Uh, then on one, we've got Piper and the remaining Sorrowful. Now these things do not flee, so this this one st st um, stampedes forwards, screaming incoherently, sort of probably muttering parts of a, a broken nursery rhyme as it swings a rusty axe. <coughs> Uh, can I get into melee with it, or are the other two? Yes. Uh, oh, away? no, you're kind of blocked. So you you, you can make a, a ranged attack, or um, you could possibly try and like push away past them. But you probably need some penalties to your attack if you once you get past them. Oh, acrobatically. Oh, actually, yeah, uh, yeah. I suppose if like you want to make a past. Yeah, make me make me an athletics check to see if you can actually tumble because you are a sort of a tumbler and acrobat. So yeah. Couldn't he theoretically uh, shadow <laughs> step? Oh, I could, could do, but yeah. that would cost me a resolve. <laughs> and I've done it once to be stylish, so... Yeah. I'll, I'll do something else to be stylish in a different way. Uh, well, yeah, three successes on the... Oh, on that's, the that's, that's more than enough. I'll allow you to... Yeah, so... Yeah, a cartwheel past or something. And, <laughs> or maybe, maybe a, like a, a slide between yep. the legs and then pop up behind it and then... Double strike. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, make a roll. Um, so, my bladed flute is slightly better because it's accurate. Uh, that only gets two hits, that's enough, isn't it? And then the short sword. Yep. 
uh, gets one hit. Still enough. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, just one success is enough to hit these. And then, so the dueling cane is also vicious, so that gets ten damage. Ooh. That is enough to instantly kill this thing, but as you're acting in the same initiative, it does make, get to make an attack. Um, and it's charging towards the, the first target, which was um, Dirge. So it does swing out with the rusty axe at Dirge, so I'll see if it hits you. Um, Dirge, would you like to dodge, parry, or um, counterattack as it swings into you? Um, I'd like to just parry it, I guess. Yep, so make a fight check, please. Um, it has got one success, so you need to get at least two successes to parry its Is blade. Is there a fortitude option? No, unfortunately not. No, okay. <laughs> well, you can stand there and tank the blow, but it just it, it just does damage to you. That's not an option. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Use your head to parry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I've got two successes. Yeah, that's fine then. So yeah, that's you need to get one more than they, they rolled, basically, because... Um, the attacker wins on a tie. Um, so yeah, you step forwards and just bring your mattock up and parry its axe out of the way. Um, and then, as as you do, um, Piper runs it through from behind with both their weapons. No, I like to feel like I just shoved it back. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, excellent. And with that very efficient combat combat ends um the 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 last sorrowful sort of sinks off piper's weapons into the the sort of the, the, th the thin layer of sewage at the bottom of the pipe and it's suddenly very quiet and dark in here again i'll pick up my lantern and, and plod on I'll, I'll pat piper on the back like he did to me there we go i'll there pick up go. the torch and keep going excellent um so you reloading and following Excellent yeah. spirit here, chaps. Yeah, Karloff is sort of like steps over the bodies. Is like, oh, I'm, I obviously made the, the 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 right choice in hiring you. Well done, everyone. <laughs> um, you step into um, what is quite clearly the nest of the sorrowful. It's sort of a, a hollowed out chamber which looks like it was part of the sewer. Um, but there's like dirty like blankets and bits and pieces have been dragged down here and left in a pile where obviously these creatures hide from the sun during the day. So um, they like still like almost human? Yes, so Sorrowful look mostly human. Their arms are slightly longer. Their faces have slightly sort of changed. But they, they despise sunlight. Um, the, the plague has driven them um, completely mad. They, they only exist to basically eat. Um, they, they weep blood and occasionally they mutter or cry um like fragments of conversation but there there's there's nothing really of their their previous selves left there if a sorrowful is it survives long enough they will slowly mutate and become something called a ghoul which is a huge bat-like creature that seems to be slightly more intelligent and much more aggressive okay thank you very much that's all right um and yeah so basically you can see the the sort of the scattered remains of this this nest um, and uh, there is no signs of a safe, but worryingly, there is. There are sort of slide marks and drag marks. It looks like more of the sort of the belongings of the hotel have sort of slid down towards the back of the chamber, where there's another sort of deeper part of the sinkhole. Um, and sort of Karloff is like poking around, and he sort of looks down that, and he sort of basically goes, "I can see it. It's it's down there." And he sort of gestures. Yeah, I guess it's yeah, I'm, I'm going that way. Now, remember what the rat said? There could be something quite big and quite nasty down there. Oh. Not that it was going to be a problem, just that we don't be prepared. <laughs> Not exactly keen on tangling with a ghoul. It's the job. I was just like, Hold my, my matic over my shoulder and my lantern in the other hand. And just act as if I'm walking through the graveyard. <laughs> so yeah, what? You... Oh. I lost everything there. Oh, sorry. Yeah, so basically, uh, uh, Dirge is being quite blasé about going down. 
It's a and, big uh, hole, right, in the ground? Yep, yeah, it's sort of a, another, it looks like part of the sewer has collapsed through into something further below. Um, and uh, Karloff is pointing down, going, I can see the safe, it's just, it's just down there. How about I throw the torch down there, and whatever flies up, we shoot it. I don't see that smart. Nuala, maybe prepared. play a little tune to <laughs> tempt it out, as we do as well. Yeah, taunt it. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, I'll start to play. Okay. Let's have a and and McCruggy tossing a torch down. Are you? I will toss the torch down and get my pistol ready and my hatchet in the other. Cool. So something, so, something hypnotic, I think this time. Yeah. Okay. Let's have a let's have another form check then. Three. Nice. So yeah, you begin playing this sort of hypnotic tune. It echoes strangely. <laughs> And as McCrug tosses the torch down, it sort of clatters off a couple of bits of stone and comes to rest. And you can see, yeah, the, the, the sewer has collapsed down into something below the sewer. And as the torch comes to rest, you can see illuminated in its sort of flickering light, there are blocks of stone making a tunnel down there. But they're much larger than bricks. They're, they're cut semi-regularly and so, yet somehow irregularly. They're, they're seven-sided and yet tessellate perfectly together. And there's a sort of a strange uh, green tinge to them. It's like whatever cut these wasn't really following the, the, the rules of human geometry when they put this thing together. You all realize that this leads down into the necropolis, the, the great think... grave city beneath Haramir. Nuala immediately curses, like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you can see at the bottom of the pile of the sort of the bricks and everything that spilled out of the sewer above, you can indeed see this huge cast iron safe sat at a funny angle with the sort of the light of the torch gleaming off the sort of the name of, of MacGuffin and son e- engraved on the front of the, the, uh, the safe. <laughs> I'll turn sorry, to... MacGuffin and son, that made me laugh. Yeah. No, he's, he's laughing as well. I'll turn Is to, it, sorry, can't remember who was... was... Sorry, go on. Sorry, actually, just, who was it? Um, was it uh, was it you, Deirdre? It was the other vermin tongue. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll just turn to you and just sort of like say, smells bad place. Or smells yeah. strange place. Smells That's what they called it, wasn't strange, it? Strange place. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I just like nod and grunt and be like, mm-hmm. and then give you the same pat on the back again because that's like the only social cue I know now. <laughs> it's probably slightly heavy on someone as slight yeah. as Piper as well, isn't it? <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, the, the, and, okay. and then resume the tune. <laughs> yeah, and as the tune echoes, it still seems to pick up strange harmonics as it's echoing through the the uh, necropolis, and something from inside the tunnel lets out a very low growl, and you see a sort of a hunchbacked humanoid shapes shamble into the light of the torch immediately uh, shooting it <laughs> yeah yeah this, me too this thing looks up at you uh, it's this sort of it would be probably about seven or eight feet tall if it wasn't hunched over uh wearing tatters of human clothes where they sort of shredded off it but its frame is much larger than a human um there is something monstrously bat-like about its face now and its arms are much sort of longer and disproportionate than that that a human should be and they're tipped with like wicked talons it looks up at you and hisses and you guys unload on it um and <laughs> let's have a let's have an initiative check and everyone gets um uh, the surprise bonus because you're basically you, you were pr- prepared and re- ready to just fire at this thing so that's a physique falls or more and everyone gets a 2d6 bonus three and successes ball, which is what it is just rolls its flat uh oh I got one success. Oh no, two successes. A four and a six. Nice. So, uh, on four, McCrug, you you fire first. All right. So make your shoot roll. Uh, This thing is at close range, so you get a bonus d6. Um, I already rolled. Yeah, and two, two successes. Not, not a minion, so it rolls its its checks actively. Um, wow, I've just rolled three sixes. Uh, so I, I got three. What did you get? Sorry. Um, I got 
two successes. Yeah, it you Oops. fire and it it leaps up the the sort of the, the spill of bricks and under your shot. <laughs> well, I guess I wouldn't know because I couldn't see whether it hit. Yeah. Uh, are you doing anything else? Um. Put the pistol back and grab my hatchet. Yep, that's fine. Cool. Uh, on three, the ghoul, Nuala, and Piper. Okay. So I first was... of all, Nuala and Piper. So I was kind of primed to shoot. So yep. should I go first? Yep. 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 So you can roll. And again, you're at close range, so plus D6. Uh, and this thing will roll its dodge again. Uh, so I have three. Uh, well, again, the, I got three, so unfortunately, it's your shot goes wide as it careens up this this spill of bricks towards you. Um, I am going to move back away mm -hmm. from like the entrance of the hole. Yep, and I'm going to use um, one resolve to quick reload. Okay, yep. So you like reload with a flick of your wrist. Uh, and Piper, what are you doing? Uh, Piper's going to um, slink into the shadows somewhere. Um, nope. <laughs> um, ready to sort of like strike when it comes to the top because I'm melee only. <laughs> yep. Well, as you're acting on the same initiative as it, it basically on its initiative, um, it will storm up the 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 spill of bricks. Um, ghouls have the ability called natural climbers, which means that they never need to make. Um, skill checks related to climbing and can cling to almost any surface. So this thing just basically scuttles up the wall like a like a spider and is suddenly amongst you guys um, and will probably swing a claw at McCrug because he was the nearest, um, and at which point then, Piper, then you can swing at it. So if you want to make your attack first. Okay. Uh, that's... Uh... And I'll roll. Uh, I it's an extra dice on it because it's accurate. Uh, two successes. Uh, and I have rolled um, two, which means you hit it because defender wins on uh, attacker wins on a tie. So roll your damage as you nice. shank it in the back. I am going to do a focus strike. Yep. So no armor. And I roll eleven damage. Okay. Yeah. So you you shank this thing in the back, oh, which means you inflict a wound as well. No armor. Um, so it has taken 11 health, and it's now taken a wound. Now, ghouls are not minions, so they have a wound track like players. Um, so it's now down to three wounds. Or it has, yeah, it has four slots, and it's got a wound, and it's one of its slots. Uh, so a great big spray of blood comes out as you sink your um, flute into something important. And then my... <laughs> second strike... <laughs> That's, That's a weird attention. phrase to utter. <laughs> <laughs> my second strike gets three hits. Uh, oh, yeah, so it needs to make a, a dodge for that. Uh, and I've rolled two, so that's a hit. I will focus strike this one as well. And I'll do nine damage. Uh, so that is no additional wound, but you've yeah, inflicted significant damage on it. Um, it lets out a horrible screech as you sink your, your weapons into it. Um, but it's all already in the process of swinging its gigantic claw at McCrug. So, McCrug, do you want to try and dodge, parry, or counterattack? So, dodge uses the reflex skill, parry uses the fight skill, counterattack uses the fight skill, but basically you still take damage if you succeed, but you knock it off balance, which makes it easier to attack in the, in the, the future. Uh going to parry. Okay, so make a fight check, please. Uh, I have uh, what have I got? Two successes, so you need to get at least three. I got a cock die. I'm just going to take it as it is. Um, that's two successes. Uh, which means he claws you. Um, so this great yep. claw swings round and uh, you take five damage, um, but these things have rending attacks, which means you halve your armor. So uh, half the value of your armor, reduce five. Two. So I have armor value four, so I take three Two. damage. Yeah, you take three damage off your health. 
Uh, and I've just realized, as this thing is up close and personal now, these things are horrifying. So could everyone make me a willpower check, please? And you need to get at least three, because this is a, a quite a, a, a disturbing creature. Then I fail automatically. God. Yeah. Oh, right. I only have a presence Failed. of two. No, I, got no. two. I got two okay. out of three. Yeah, I got two. It's okay, so it's everyone who fails, you lose three resolve because this Ooh. thing is horrifying. Oh, yeah, like... Nuala was like, fuck, I, I really did not want this today. <laughs> <laughs> I knew this was going to happen. I knew it. I hate everything about this. <laughs> Dirge just thinks and stuff like, that's not bones. <laughs> um, yes, so the, the ghoul swings its claws into um McG McG uh, bleh, not, not McGruff uh, McCrug um, <laughs> and as it hits you with its claw it latches its claw around you and then opens its mouth and looks like it's basically intending to bite you with its next attack um, Come on! and then on Do it! dirge <laughs> um, upon seeing this I, I, I set my lantern down again and I just give like a, a big uh, and go to like spike pick the, the spiky pick part of the matic. I want to go yep. in the mouth. Excellent. Cool. So make a, a fight check. As long as that doesn't hit. No, that's fine. It's, in not, the head. It's, it's, it's not that sophisticated a system. Uh, <laughs> uh, the ghoul will attempt to sort of parry your, your blow out the way with its claw, but rolls nothing. So you just need to get one success to hit it. Oh, okay. Well, that's good because I get six rolls. Yeah. Oh, surely. Ah, I've dropped one of them. I'll just use this one. Okay. Yeah, I've got more than one success. Excellent. So yeah, you managed. It brings a claw up, but it's too busy like concentrating on like clawing at um uh McCrug. So you it think they the magic into it? Uh, can I use mighty blow as well? Uh yes, you can. So spend a resolve. Okay. So I now only have three. And I do six plus three. Um, dropped on a dice. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, oh no. Uh, this is why I shouldn't have small dice. <laughs> okay, I'll just roll the six and then the three separately. Got it. Okay. So I've got 10, 18, 26. Good grief. It's going to kill this thing. Oh, <laughs> 37. Wow. Um, yeah, you spike this thing in the back. So it takes another wound for basically um, inflict more than 10 damage. And um, you inflict a massive wound in its back. It absolutely howls. And it is now um, so injured that basically it's now in its wound track. It like whirls around. And is like screeching and and bleeding, like blood jets everywhere as you cleave into this thing. Um, was it let it's... go of McCrug? It's still got McCrug in a in a grip, but you you have definitely inflicted some some na nasty damage on it. Um, oh, that was on two on four McCrug. Um, you can attempt to try and break free of this um, grapple if you want. I'm gonna bite it. Okay, you're going to attack it. Okay, make a make a <laughs> uh, make a, a fight check to try and bite it. Then I get three hits. Uh, oh yeah, it's going to. I suppose. What is it? How do you? Is it, it's just going to try and dodge? Um, even though it's got you gripped, it yeah, can't it's dodge. It, it it fails. Um, so you basically bite it. So I'm going to count that as like an unarmed attack. So, um, an unarmed attack. What's your physique? Four. So you do 2d6 damage with an unarmed attack. So, And I'm going to spend a point of resolve to do a mighty blow. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> 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 so, 4d6 yeah. damage? Yeah, yeah. That's 11 plus, that's 20 damage. Excellent. So um, it's now in its wound track. So basically, any hit that inflicts damage does just does a wound. So you inflict another wound on this thing. It's now bleeding. It looks like it's really on like the its last legs now as you sink your teeth into its neck. 
you just did Yum. the same amount of damage with a bite that I do with a <laughs> rifle. <laughs> I gotta eat somehow. <laughs> uh, maybe don't swallow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, on three, the the ghoul, Nuala, and Piper. All right, uh, Nuala's gonna shoot again. Uh, Piper, what are you doing? Um, I'm yeah, just a, a few, another couple of quick, quick blades into it. Cool. So both of you. Uh, so first of all, let's do Nuala's shot. Um, so this thing's gonna try and dodge as it as you shoot. Uh, Only I one rolled. Uh, I've rolled three successes, unfortunately. So it's sort of, even though I it's again. Yeah, even though it's bleeding and and sort of you know on its last legs, it just still ducks supernaturally fast, and the shot whistles over its head. Uh, what are you doing? Anything else? Are you quick reload? Or are you reloading? Or um, I'm going to quick reload and uh, back up again. Sure. And Wallet does not want to be near this thing. <laughs> Piper. So um, so yeah, so two strikes again. So first one. Uh, oh, that's terrible. One hit. And I will roll its it's gonna dodge. Uh it's got three, so it's it again it's weaving around. Alright, and the second one gets four hits. Uh and it rolled Thanks. two, so you've hit it. <laughs> the trouble is this is the one. I will focus strike it again. Because okay. uh, if it when they're on the wound track, it's any damage as long as it beats yeah, your armor. Is, yeah, yeah, so no, yeah, as long no. as you inflict enough damage to get through its armor. So if I do if I do focus strike, then I definitely get yep. through its armor, don't I? Yes. It would have been five. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it probably wouldn't have done, would it? Uh, <laughs> no, it, that would have glanced off its armor. Yeah. So five damage was that. <clears throat> yeah, five. Yeah, but that is a, its final wound. Um, and with that, how do you slay the ghoul? Um, so, well, so uh, because I kind of I had the... Um, the, the the first attack with the with the flute missed, so I was probably trying to sort of bar his mouth so that he didn't sort of bite down on the crook. And then as he's sort of like uh, sort of almost sort of wrestling the the um, the um, the flute out off my hand, I'll just kind of then just sort of like um, sort of like underhand dagger move and just sort of like bring the the short sword. Which I see more as like like a long stiletto or something like that, um, mm. and just sort of like bring that sort of like up and underneath his his jaw and through the top of his skull. Nice. Amazing, yeah. And it, it this this creature lets out a death rattle, releases its hold on McCrug, and sort of keels over and slams into the ground, um, and and is dead. And I'll just play a little sort of ditty on the. On the Blow thing. the blood like, out the back like of the flute. A, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it'll, it'll have a sort of like a gurgle to it, but like a like yeah. a Looney Tune sort of like. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. So who got who got hit? M- McCru- I did. I was the only one who got hit for just three damage. And hooked. So just McCrug got hit. Yeah, just McCrug. All right, uh, Nuala's coming over. And uh, it's going to do a medicine or a medical check. Yep. Oh, oh, I thought that's me well then. Uh, like medications. <laughs> I mean, I have a surgeon's um, kit, so I've got like, I genuinely do. <laughs> I have like <laughs> bandages and tools and yeah. <clears throat> what here. Not. Take some of this laudanum. It's good for you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Uh, so that's six. McCroy's like, um, no. <laughs> I've had experience <laughs> with doctors and I don't trust them. Uh, three successes. Uh, yeah, you Why can. Why are you healing me? You regain. <laughs> I have self healing. <clears throat> well, yeah, you you can regain full health if you let um uh Nuala tend to your wounds. It will heal heal you for full health, but you can refuse it. Fine, whatever. <laughs> you're, you're, you're she already rolled, so whatever. Yeah, you are very. Yeah, you're lucky that I rolled very poorly for the ghoul because they can be incredibly nasty if they actually manage to get hit in on you. But um. Yeah. The, yeah, the the thing is dead at your feet, and you can see down in the in the sort of the, the this little bit of the necropolis, this safe sitting there. Um, Karloff will appear from behind whatever he was hiding behind. And it's like, is it is it safe? No, stay back there a minute longer. <laughs> Pass <laughs> the key, and we'll look into it for it for you. 
Uh, McCrug laughs, McCrug but kind of chokes on the blood still in his mouth and <laughs> spits it out. <laughs> oh. Can I like? I... Does the ghoul have any like valuable organs yes. or claws or anything that I can just take from its body? Well, I think you, you can, can skin it. You can skin it. Um, yeah. The other thing is that in on rare cases there is something called pale marrow, which you can sometimes extract from ghouls. Um, I feel can... like that's something you have to be smart with. Well, yeah, potentially. Um, you could, yeah, you could definitely try surgeon. and skin this thing. There is, yeah, if there's a surgeon, you could try and extract some pale marrow from it. Hi, I'm yeah, a you surgeon. You could use your surgeon kit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, can, yeah, if can you... you get me some marrow, and I can, can I have a ghoul? Please. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'll I'll do it. Yeah. Okay. Make me a make me a medicine check, and then um, who said they were going down to the safe? I'll go down to the safe. Yeah. Three successes. Yeah, that you can. It's maybe not something you've done before, but you, from what you've heard, um, there's this sort of this strange pale tissue, if I, if I occasionally found within ghoul corpses. And as you sort of like slice this thing open, you can see there is this sort of this quivering organ inside it, which you sort of hook out and slap in a, a jar, which you think is probably worth quite a lot. Um, cool. You can also, well, the, the reason people want pale marrow is you can consume it. Um, which increases your physique by one point for 24 hours. Um, however, um, it costs you resolve because of the, the exquisite nightmares you experience the next night you sleep. <laughs> nice. nice. Um, another thing, I found <laughs> it right next to Palmero is ghoul hide cloak. Mm -hmm. so and skin it for a cloak that sorrowful will ignore the wearer unless they take hostile action against them. Yeah, yeah. So you can flay this thing's skin off if you want, and and roll it up. I thought that's what um, I was doing by skinning it. Yes, yeah. So that's what. Uh, yeah, Dirge did say he was skinning it. So yeah. So you've got this this hide cloak, which you know yeah, is very useful. Um, it needs to be pr preserved and turned into a cloak. But <laughs> yeah, it's kind of kind of gross because this thing was once a human. Yeah, that you know these things happen. <laughs> <laughs> He's no longer he, human, so these things okay. happen. <laughs> <laughs> so it's the way of life, you know. Things yeah. die. You may as well use it. And it's like took away the partially human skin. <laughs> just <laughs> my little backpack. Amazing. <laughs> or uh, satchel that backpack. Yeah, yeah. yeah and I'll um, uh, I'll hold on to that uh, pale mirror. Yeah, excellent. Um, and yeah, as you you open the safe, um, inside there is. A glittering cache of shillings. Um, there's um, like what looks like a rolled up painting. Um, there's a couple of like small sort of felt boxes that when you open them have got like necklaces and, and earrings and things like that. There is a veritable trove of treasure in here, um, which you easily estimate um, is probably worth a couple of hundred um, shillings to the right people. So there's I I got money and treasure. Well, it's well, it's tre yeah, it's it's there's it's, there's no <clears throat> magical swords or anything. It's basically just a load of money and jewels. No, but so it, like the jewels yeah. are worth a couple of hundred, and there's also money. Yes, you think so? Yeah. Okay. The uh, safe is worth something, right? Cause it is good customer. <laughs> I mean, I mean so it, it's, 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 it's really heavy. You'd probably have to drag this <laughs> thing. Is you know. <laughs> You'd probably need like a horse and cart to transport it. Yeah, not likely in the. Yeah, yeah. We are in the uh, Undercity, right? Uh, you're in the Necropolis, yes. Necropolis, yeah. Is there anything I can see around? Uh, so where you are um, is sort, sort of seems to be like a hallway. Um, there are a couple of alcoves and sort of dusty niches, but there doesn't seem to be anything. There's a few scraps of. Um, maybe like parchment or maybe leather or something like that. A lot of the upper tunnels of the necropolis were looted in the early days of Haramir when they were first discovered. And from the looks of it, you think you're probably in one of those tunnels. So if you follow it, you'll probably find your way back out into Haramir. 
there's there's entrances to the necropolis all over the place but unfortunately that does mean like a lot of the good stuff has been found and taken if you if you travel deeper down into the necropolis into like the lower vaults you'd almost certainly find things like oracalcum and other strange worthwhile things but that would be quite a, a trip is the necropolis where the sorrowful plague started from or did it come from who knows the, the, oh, okay yeah no one really oh. knows where the sorrow plague came from. It affects everyone, rich and poor. Um, it's in all corners of the city, in all walks of life. No one knows the cause. No one knows if there's a cure. Um, it's fatal in um, ninety percent of cases. You'll you'll die after a couple of days. But ten percent of people who catch it are left as sorrowful. It's sort of this living nightmare, and. Of those, if they survive long enough, they'll transform into ghouls. Oh, okay. Um, and the, the bitter sacrament does not do anything to the sorrowful. The sorrow. No, it doesn't. No. So the wonder That's drug made by the church, um, although it cures everything else, does not cure the sorrow plague. And deages you ten fucking years. That's insane. Yeah, that too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and who knows if the, the bitter sacrament does anything else? Maybe the church, though. No. <laughs> Anyways, but yes, it's... Noala is not thrilled about trying to go through the necropolis. I mean, we <laughs> could easily just line like... about <laughs> having to go through it. <laughs> if we can take on a big ghoul, we can probably t- uh, we can probably take on a few squishy low human rags. Maybe another day. <laughs> well, it, it Karloff will quite happily sort of produce some sacks that he brought for this very purpose and like help you bag up the um, the treasure. We, are we counting it as we bag it? Uh, if you want to, yeah, you can. Did he you give can... us five bags? <laughs> can we split <laughs> it up now. Hey, well, let's. That that sounds like a convenient thing to do. Um, there is a, a total of four hundred and fifty shillings worth of um, assorted coinage and jewellery included in that. So, um, with uh, as you are splitting it five ways, uh, let me just do some quick maths. Uh, 90, I think. 90. 90 shillings per person. Um, Love it. So, can we take our 60 shillings out of well, oh no, because it's only 90. Has he got our 60 shillings on him? Or does he have no, it's, it was 100. It was, he also was paying 100. Oh. So you have a. So in grand total, you've got. Uh, although he was saying he was paying you that on return, but you can put oh, that down. Okay. Now. So it's 190 shillings you all earned from this. Nuala is specifically only taking the money. Mm-hmm. I'll take it. So it's like no, you're leaving like, like a pile of gems for someone else as their their share. Like yeah, like Nuala's taking ninety shillings from it, but is only taking it in cash. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't, want around, don't want to be messing around with fences. <laughs> All right, I'll I'll switch with you. Yeah, I'll, for... I don't mind taking the jewels. <laughs> Fine, I'll take it. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, right. yeah, so what's your what's your escape plan? Basically, you think with a little bit of navigation, you could probably find your way through the necropolis and find another entrance somewhere back into the city, uh, or you by could go now, back up into. Right by now, have those roots already eroded? Uh, yes, we are in a new scene. So if you stick your head back out, it's, they've collapsed into horrible green slime, which will be slippy to get up. Mm. But you know. There were also the stairs. They were just kind of janky. Yeah. Yeah, I felt like I was going to fall down them, so I just made the roots. Does anyone have rope? No one has... I no. feel like I should have brought... No. no. <laughs> a tinder skin. A tinder box, not a tinder skin. That's I don't know what you're thing. worried about me going through the city for... The undercity for... That seems perfectly fine. Necropolis? What's the problem? So let's go. I pick up my lantern and I start going. <laughs> Nuala is I'll, um, wildly anxious about this. 
Alright, um, can I pick up the pieces of parchment and leather that I found? Yeah, sure. Yeah, it's literally just like, it looks like you think there was possibly like a mummy in this alcove, and it's like bits of um, like preserved skin and bits of um, mm-hmm. bandage liniment, but yeah, you can pick those up. I don't know why preserved um, skin is gross and ghoul skin isn't, but... Uh... <laughs> yeah, um... I guess I'll just wrap it around the torch and then just keep going. <laughs> cool. Um, it's yeah the 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 necropolis um, is strange and ethereal. It was obviously built by n- inhuman architects. It doesn't quite ad- ad- adhere to Euclidean geometry. The hallways, although they seem symmetrical from far away, as you get closer, there's something off about the angles. Here and there, you come across a, a huge statue that sort of rears up against the wall, and there's something vaguely bat-like, but not entirely, about its dimensions and whatever it's portraying. Um, you might have heard enough about the necropolis to know that the, the civilization that created it were a race of inhuman creatures called the Ympir, um, which there are mummies of them occasionally, and deeper down, the initial investigators, uh, explorers of the uh, necropolis found a gigantic preserved creature, one of the Ympir, which they, they dubbed the Undergod, and the church was formed around it, worshipping it, uh, and it is from the Undergod that they, they mine the bitter sacrament. Um, so, is the... Sorry, is the Undergod just one Ympir, or are there little Ympirs? Uh, there are little ones that they found. I mean, a, a Ympir mummy, you might have seen one in like a a display cabinet up in the city. It stands about eight or nine feet tall um, and is wrapped in bandages. Again, there's something disturbingly bat-like about their proportions. Um, But the Undergod, as far as you understand it, is a a titanic member of its species, absolutely huge. Um, You've you've never seen it or, you know, really heard it accurately described because it's the most holy of the church's relics, but it sits at the heart of the necropolis. So the churches around Haromaya worship the necropolis. They yeah, they specifically worship the the undergod. Okay. And then there's also the imperial saints. Yes, yeah, which is the the proper the proper religion where you've got oh, okay. Okay. Uh, there's the imperial saints are dozens upon dozens of of saints um with fantastic names and titles like uh Leonidas the Enucleated and uh <laughs> Saint Isabel the Flayed. Uh, and um, Valorus the Confessor, Demetrios the Broken, um, but they're all all in saints, and you pray to them for different things. They are uh, they're patrons of different things. So Diana, the oh, that's teacher, interesting. patron of the learned. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, I guess we're going now. Yep. Up to so, yeah, the you... Mega City. Yep, you trek your way through the ne- necropolis, and it it's quite. That's <laughs> oh, right. Uh, yeah, it's quite easy for you to find your way through the necropolis. You're, you're at the surface levels, so you do manage to find your way to another entrance with very little trouble, although it might be a slightly tense and hair-raising experience. And uh, after a little while, you wind your way back to the bastion and to safety, and that is where we will conclude this contract. Uh, But we'll do a little downtime cycle, just so you can see how this downtime works. So basically, you are um, once you return, uh, Karloff pays you your your remaining 100 shillings. He will take his cut and and thank you, um, and he will head back off into the bastion. Um, In the downtime system, everyone gets three actions. the actions, um, you can choose to um, regain all your health if you've lost any health. You can choose to regain all your resolve if you've lost any resolve. You can retru- re- choose to recover from up to two wounds. Uh, you can choose to reduce your curse by a degree. Uh, you can craft items from raw materials, or you can trade to get some extra money. Um, so, I, so trading... Would I have to trade the gems in order to actually get value out of them? Or uh, uh, no, they... that's what it is. They're just basically they're like they're recuperable money. It's it's just just 
it translates yeah. directly into funds. All right. <laughs> I'd um, like to try and find someone to make a ghoul cloak and see about this cool ghoulish organ that I've, I've got in a jar. Yeah, sure. So, uh, McCrug, you're 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 going to trade. Is that no? I'm going to oh. regain resolve. Okay, cool. Uh, and then you've got two more actions as well. Wait, what? So you, you've got you've got three actions per downtime. So um, you can regain your resolve. That's one action. You have two more to choose from. So for trading, do I buy items or sorry? Is no, that uh, not trade me? is literally it just gives you extra money. Trade gives you forty shillings. It's assumed that you you go out and you know, maybe you gamble or maybe you you buy and sell or maybe you go out and just do some small jobs. But at the end of the the downtime period, you step away with forty extra shillings. Well, I guess I really have nothing else to do. Um, I'll recover my health back mm-hmm. to thirty two, and earn some money. Yep. So you you convalesce, you reflect, and you trade. Uh, what does Nuala do? Um, Noala is going to reflect. Mm-hmm. Um, Recovering a resolve. Yeah. Um, trade. So gaining 40 yep. shillings and then try and uh, tinker on their gun a little bit and crash. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, so you can um, spend some time, which we won't get into now, but that would allow you to make some skill checks to like potentially add more refinements or, mm-hmm. um, yeah, craft oh. raw materials. Um, Piper, what is Piper doing? Uh, Piper will uh, definitely be getting some resolve back. Yeah. Um, and can I trade twice? Um, yes, I think you yeah. can. Yeah. So I'll do. Yes, that. you can take the same action multiple times. There you go. Yep. And dirge. I'll what is dirge? Play in the taverns. <laughs> yes, there's your crafting. Yeah. Oh, your trading. Sorry. Trade. Yeah. And I think. Um, I'd like to reflect. Yep. Trade. Yep. And you said crafting raw materials. Is that that's not the ghoul skin thing, is it? Oh no, that would that's that's a perfectly applicable thing. So you've got this raw material with is you've skinned a ghoul. So yeah, you could use that craft slot to basically um normally there are dice checks involved but as we're doing a sort of a, an overview of it, it. You could easily get someone to basically turn your ghoul skin into a ghoul skin cloak for you. Yeah, I'd like to, to pay someone to do that. And then also like in the trading bit, can I see about selling this ghoul organ? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, I think um, Nuala ended up with the, the the pale marrow. But if you want to try and flog it, you can. <sighs> oh, split. I thought she got the marrow. I got the organ from it. Well, same I thought thing. They were two yeah. separate yeah. things. Oh, no, okay. no, the Never marrow mind. is the organ. Yeah. Never mind. Then just the ghoul skin. Oh. Yeah. Excellent. But that is basically um, where we will conclude this. Um, I hope this was a, a sort of a good little introduction. This is a very quick contract, um, but it sort of shows you the kind of things you can get up to in When the Moon Hangs Low and the sort of the, the typical gameplay loop ending with a downtime section. And then, um, yeah, you pick up another contract and get into more trouble. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. Thank you very much for running it for us. <laughs>